While this podcast is not explicit, the content on today's episode may not be suitable for children. Sex, intimacy, and vulnerability. How these three ideas end up colliding in the bedroom and either creating amazing sex and connection or ended up creating resentment and distance in your relationship. As we've discussed in previous episodes, sex and intimacy are not the same thing. Yes, there is intimate sex, and there's also non-intimate sex. And oftentimes we confuse the two, but they're really not the same. Sex and intimacy both create intense feelings, Mm -hmm. but conflating the two is a mistake. And when we do so, it can cause a lot of confusion and conflict in relationships. Sex is an act. Intimacy is more of the feeling. Well, actually, maybe we should just go ahead and define what intimacy is. Yeah, I think so. So intimacy is the degree of closeness or connection between two people. Intimacy isn't about what the partner brings to your relationship or what they do. It's not about their beauty or their humor. If it was, I'd be amazingly intimate. Um, <laughs> It's not about the income they make or even their contributions around the house. Deep intimacy is being with someone in their wholeness. It's about being figuratively naked with each other. It's about stripping away all the walls, all of your defenses, all the personas and masks, and just being completely and emotionally naked with your partner. Mm, Being vulnerable. Yeah, trusting. And then also trusting that it will be an emotionally safe place for one another yeah i think that's i think that's something that we miss sometimes is we have to create this emotional safe space and sometimes sex and intimacy they happen simultaneously but they are two distinct needs and desires that on occasion overlap right and so today we'd like to have an honest discussion with you about what men really want in terms of sex and intimacy yep do men bond with their partner during sex Does sex mean something different to a man who is in an emotionally committed relationship? What are men really craving when they want sex with their committed partner? Ooh, all good questions. Super good questions. So let's do it. So the wrong signals are sent through media all the time. Watch any comedy or any show that references sex and men are always portrayed as this hyper sex focused, constant pursuit of women to sleep and conquer. Mm, Conquer. Yeah. And we all know that stereotype pretty well, but how much of those stereotypes is actually real and how much of it is just an illusion or even part of our conditioning and the stories that we've come to believe? Right. And I think this is important to think about because these stereotypes often play out in the marriage conflicts that we see. So in about probably 80% of the couples that we coach and that we work with, sex is a point of contention or conflict for them. And in these sessions, we hear a lot of these stereotypes come out. We hear things like, he is never satisfied, or he's just impossible to please. I'm never good enough for him in the bedroom, or he's just a sex-hungry beast, right? That's a a fun quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yes, in our sessions, it generally is the, the husband, the man who shares that he isn't satisfied with the quality or the quantity of the sex that's happening in the relationship. I wonder why he shares that. And, and oftentimes, well, why do you think he shares that? I think we're going to talk about that. Okay. To which the wife often says to him something like, you know, I don't know what the problem is. We're having sex all the time. I feel like we have sex at least once a week, at, at least every two weeks. And, you know, I just feel like you put so much pressure on me. I never feel like I'm good enough to please you in the bedroom. And this is this is kind of a common Yeah, but it's this conversation view that men and women have about what sex is Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so it means to them yeah and what it means to them so oftentimes the stereotypes for women are that they have this low desire or they're morally superior prudes or (laughs) or the man is just this brainless sex addict and it's something we're used to seeing and hearing in our everyday culture yeah but what's interesting is the stereotype has not always existed which causes me to wonder how much this stereotype is part of our current culture and conditioning Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because up until about the 18th century, men and women were considered equally sexual. According to sex therapist Lee Norin, 
the notion that women's sexuality is somehow lesser than the, the man's is actually a quite new phenomenon. Before the 1700s, we regarded both sexes as obscene, passionate, and even immoral. And this meant that we believed that men and women were equally sexual and that sexual pleasure wasn't just a male priority. So as we dig into what is really important to men, and we talk to these couples, it's not just the act of sex that they're missing. It's not usually just an orgasm that they want. The more we help couples to align their values, and what they usually find out is that what men want is a lot more than just the act itself of sex. So what does that mean a man really wants from sex, Robert? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm going to put you under the spotlight. You're up. What do men really want from sex? Well, I can't speak for all men, right? Mm -hmm. But just in our conversations with a lot of men and a lot of couples, it, it seems that I maybe understand the, the male side, the male perspective a bit more. So specifically for you, what are some of the things you want and you're looking for most in sex? I'd say probably connection, intimacy, and closeness. Those are, those are kind of the things that I really want most from sex. And, and I say that because it's really a great way for us to connect. For the most part, generally speaking, men usually see sex as a way to connect with their partner. Part of it is pleasure. Um, it's satisfying, absolutely. But it's really more about our closeness. It's not just the sex act, and it's rarely just about sex. It's the one time we as men get you alone to ourselves. And it's the time that I want to spend with my best friend without kids. And one of the few times I get you alone. And it's the time when we really get to focus on each other. Mm. So what I'm hearing and what it sounds like you're really saying is that what you're wanting is intimacy. What you're wanting is intimacy. And the pleasure and the fun and the sexual gratification, that's just the icing on the cake, right? I mean, sometimes. Is, is, it, is it always intimate, though? Is sex always going to be intimate for you? No, no. Sometimes it's just primal. And yeah. sometimes it's just about pleasure and fun. Yeah. But is that bad? Is that is that a problem? Is that a problem that sometimes that sex isn't intimate? Or like, are there times that you feel like sex without intimacy is okay? No, sex sex is fun. It can be a fun. And, and sometimes it's great to have fun just for fun's sake. Yeah, I agree. And I think when you have a lot of intimacy in your day-to-day -day life, intimacy isn't always just the requirement for sex. Right. Sometimes it's okay to, to let go of the rules and the requirements around having to have intimacy and just focus on you know, having shared pleasure and having fun. And, and there are times where that's okay too, right? Yeah. And I mean, I think often, you know, when, as I think back to the couples we meet and even in our own marriage, the busier we get, the more we let those intimate opportunities pass us by. So soon, if we're letting enough intimate opportunities pass us by, the only time we really can connect, the only time we can really be intimate is through sex. And I think that's why men oftentimes want more sex, i.e. more connection, as a way to fill that void for intimacy. Right. Interesting. So it seems like intimacy is really the primary goal. So what about creating intimacy during non-sexual moments? Mm -hmm. What about you know, other than during sex specifically, when do you feel most intimate in our relationship? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of things, but probably first one would be when I feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, when you tell me you appreciate me, or mm -hmm. that creates some intimacy. Yeah, I agree. When else do you feel intimacy in our in our non-sexual moments? When else do you feel intimate? Um, probably when I feel cared for. As men, we're not really used to having people care for us. It's typically not our role to be cared for, it's sort of wired into us to be the caretaker for others. And often our masculinity and or upbringing doesn't allow us to be cared for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about like deep conversations and things like that? Do you feel like those are times when we have intimate moments does that deepen intimacy between us yeah yeah and it's those quiet conversations i mean oftentimes there are things that we can only share one with another mm -hmm. and we can't share them around other people and often those are our vulnerabilities or things we're concerned about and and that 
creates this deep connection and deep intimacy. And you mentioned earlier, like being vulnerable and how important that is to to feeling intimacy. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. And and as I talked about that, I mean, I think you, you know, vulnerability equals intimacy. And I have to feel accepted as well, not judged. So that's when I can feel intimate. Otherwise, I'm just holding stuff back and I'm not going to feel totally intimate. Also, I feel like it's important to also talk a little bit about rituals because one of the things we're really big on and talk a lot about here on the podcast are are rituals of connection. Yes. And how those rituals of connection deepen intimacy. So let maybe we can share a few of our favorite rituals that bring us closer together and create more connection and more intimacy. Oh yeah, like I'm I'm big on that. Yeah. So probably our first one is we call them stress relieving conversations, but really it's a I, maybe maybe I should name that a connected conversation, you know, or when I come home from work and and maybe it's just five minutes where you're just asking me about my day and um, and you listen and you listen to me and you don't try to coach me, you don't try to fix anything. And the same goes for me. Like I listen to, you know, how your day went and I'm not trying to coach you and I'm not trying to fix anything. I'm just trying to listen. I'm just trying to be present. It's hard to be present. Yeah. And we do this every day. I mean, yes. pretty much every day of the week when at least the work week, we're, we're having five to 30 minute conversations just about our day yeah. and relieving stress. Yeah. We also have rituals for how we say goodbye in the morning. We never leave the house without a kiss, a hug, and finding out something about one another's day. Yeah, uh, that's actually pretty funny because sometimes I, left, or I leave early at like 5.30 in the morning and I try to sneak out without waking you up and you'll wake up and you're like, uh-uh, nope, buddy, you get back <laughs> over here. Yeah. And then we have rituals for how we say hello and you greet, greet each other at the end of the day, which is part of the stress relieving conversation. But it's also it's usually an embrace or a kiss or something like that yeah. when we see each other. Yeah. And it's just that touch. Um, and it's also one of our one of our rituals is how we stay connected during the day. And it's rare for us to go a full day without talking to each other, whether I call her at lunch or if I have a break or it's just a quick text message just to see how it's going. Other thing is, you know this whole communication, just sort of knowing what's going on throughout the day. I mean, I know that I knew that Charla had um, sort of back-to-back coaching uh, today and and I knew when she had a break and I wanted to text her just to see how it was going with her. And and it's nice to celebrate each other's wins and, and also kind of hold each other when you're not having a great day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have um, weekend rituals. So those are the, oh, the things we just those, talked yeah. about were a lot of our weekday rituals, but we have rituals on the weekend for, um, you know, how we... For example, Saturday mornings, usually our son is still sleeping, you know, sleeping till noon, teenager. Yes, teenagers, yeah. But we'll sneak out in the morning and we'll go get breakfast or we'll go get a pedicure or we'll run through Starbucks and we'll just drive around a little bit. And that's kind of our, our typical Saturday morning ritual. Yeah. And and on that same, you know, on the same vein, that's that's another opportunity for us to just learn how to, you know, talk about life and goals and, and just mm-hmm. challenges, what went good, what went wrong and, you know, what went right, all those types of things. And then another big one for me, because my love language, my love strategy is is physical touch and I'm very kinesthetic, um, you know, expressing non-sexual affection is also a really important ritual for me. Absolutely. Um, you know, when there have been times when when we've had conflicts earlier in our marriage around sex, it was usually because I was not feeling like I was loved or wanted beyond what happened in the bedroom. And once you started realizing my love language and fulfilling that on a regular basis, I no longer felt that way. So having daily expression um, physically is, is, is another ritual that's important, especially to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as you said earlier, life has a way of, of sort of distracting us. And we often let these opportunities and these rituals kind of slip by so let's talk about a few of the big things that we know prevent us from having this intimacy. What holds us back? What prevents us from from doing these things? It's part of just of how you are maybe not focusing on your relationship as much. And and so being overly scheduled or too busy, and that's a symptom of of placing your relationship not as the you know, not in the first three top thing I top items that you're taking care of on a daily basis. You put it down to four and five and six and and that's going to slip. Yeah. Which yeah. goes along with complacency, right? Yeah. You're just being complacent in your relationship. And then conflict obviously is another yeah. big one that'll pull people out of intimacy when when conflict is being managed poorly, then then nobody wants to be intimate. No, nobody wants. And you know, and and as we let the intimacy slide, then 
some other things can kind of take their place, mm. right? Like judgment, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, stonewall, stonewalling, looks of yeah. disgust. And these are killers of intimacy. And then once intimacy goes away, your relationship starts to falter. Yeah. And also another thing I, I see is invalidating you know, when we're when we're working with couples, if one of them brings up a concern or a worry or a problem, yeah, that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Like, I don't know why that's such a problem. I don't know why you're making such a big deal about that. Right. Yeah. So invalidating is is also a, a yeah a, an intimacy killer, and distractions like our phone, our cell phones being not present is a huge intimacy killer. I think. Yeah, I think that um, we actually need to practice being present. We do. We have to practice that in our daily lives, um, especially especially the more connected we are with phones and, and Apple Watches and, and all those things. I think we have to practice tuning everything else out and showing the other person that we're connected with them and that we want to be in this conversation and we don't want to be distracted. Nothing else is more important. I agree, which I think is why coming back full circle, um, I think it's really the big reason why men typically use sex as a way to create connection, to create closeness, to create intimacy, because life does provide all of these distractions. Our work is distraction. Our cell phones are a distraction. But coming back full circle again, sex provides an opportunity for us to recenter and reconnect. Yeah. And and I think this is a great conversation and something as a woman to actually have with you, because as a woman, I think it's really important for us to understand and look deeper at what the meaning of sex is to our partner. Because, you know, inadvertently in the past, when I was younger, I know that I've said things that have hurt you. Maybe I can give a couple of examples. Because I didn't really understand what sex meant to you. I didn't really right. understand that you were wanting to connect with me for me. I just saw myself at times as just filling a need for you. And so there were times when I'm sure I said things like, you know, just finish or, you know, let's just get it over with or whatever. Yeah, those are super helpful. <laughs> not not great intimacy builders yep. when I didn't really realize that you wanted to be with me, that the purpose of it was to connect and to feel intimate with me. And, yeah. and how, I, how much different would things have been if we'd have known to have this conversation sooner? And it, well, and I think part of it is the stereotypes that we that we buy into that men are these sex hungry beasts you know we we don't realize that they actually want this deeper connection and closeness with we, us we crave and that it's meaningful to you yeah. yeah because we don't we don't talk about it yeah we don't spend any time talking about it i think that'd be a great idea for couples to have a conversation about what the meaning is maybe that would be some good tasking for this week for yeah, everybody so maybe we suggest that this episode is a great starting place for you and your partner to open up discussions in your individual relationships about sex and intimacy, how they're different. What do they mean to you? When do you feel intimate in your relationship? What sex means to each of you? What is important to you about intimacy? What is important to you about sex? Mm -hmm. I think it's important for couples to have these conversations about their thoughts and their desires around intimacy and sex. And you might be surprised what you learn about one another and you might also be surprised at how having these conversations actually helps deepen your understanding, your love, and your intimacy between you. But there's a, there's a lot to be gained from understanding what the meaning is and, and the why behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. If this episode resonated with you, remember, remember to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. As always, be kind to each other, take care of each other, put each other first. It's the small and simple things every day that create strong relationships. Until next time.